Hello, hello. Happy Sunday night. How are you all? I haven't got my music up tonight. We're having um a few internet issues. So no dancey dancey for me tonight. Um I mean I could sing for you, but um that might actually ruin the live for you, so maybe I won't do that. But um welcome to the Sunday night live for this week. Tell me in the comments, guys. Um, what you got up to today as always it is um, hashtag live if you're here watching with us on this beautiful Sunday night and hashtag replay if you're watching at a later point but tell me in the comments what you got up to this weekend the weather was actually pretty good um, there were stacks of sunshine yesterday although it's a little bit cold there was so much sunshine we had a birthday in the house this weekend we um had Miss 10, turned Miss 11, and it has been an epic weekend. I'll be brutally honest, I am hanging to get to bed. Um, I did, I've done about 21,000 steps today, and I'm exhausted, and I'm just looking at who is on here, and I can see <laughs> some people are on here who for 21,000 steps a day for them is nothing. I, I see you, Mel. <laughs> hi, Paula. Hi, Lynette. Hi, Granny Lynn. How are you? Um, hi, Kylie. Kylie had her son's 18th birthday party. Fantastic. I hope it went well, Kylie. Jeez, 18. God, don't wish, I don't wish that upon me just yet. I'm quite happy with 11 at the moment. I think she can stay there for a little while. Um, we also had a little bit of a challenge um, earlier in the year with some friends to see if she would be my height before she turned 11, and she hasn't. She's still got about mm, an inch to go, so I'm really glad about that one too. So, um, it doesn't say much for you when your child is 11 and taller than you, but um, and I'm not short by any means. So it's been a good weekend all around, but yes, we're exhausted too. Tell me in the comments, guys, what did you get up to with the beautiful weather this weekend? Kylie, 18, I'm sure it does come too quickly. It really does. Alrighty, so um, like I said, as always, if you're watching live, hashtag live. It's a hashtag replay if you're watching the replay. Make sure you ask questions in the comments if you need to if you want anything clarified further or guys if you're watching just give us a like give the entire video a like even if you don't feel like commenting or whatever um even just giving it a like lets me know that you are enjoying what you're reading or maybe that i'm giving you something useful <laughs> um i mean you guys keep turning up week after week so obviously i'm giving you something useful i hope if i'm not then i need to know about it um, so that I can fix that too. Hi, Shauna. I can see you've popped on as well. All right. So this is the third week of our exploration of gut health. And we are going tonight to look at five things that might be ruining your gut health or at least contributing to it being in an unhealthy state. So just a quick reminder that I am not a medical professional. I don't have a medicine degree, um, but everything I bring to you is based on research and experience, not only through my um, experience as a nutrition coach and weight management specialist, but also with my own um, journey as a woman who has a tendency for poor gut health issues. All right. So just, I do need to preclude that as well, um, saying that one. All right. Let's have a look at the five things that could be causing your gut health some issues. Number one, eating the same foods all of the time. Now, the bacteria in your gut actually grows and thrives depending on what you put in your body, okay? So what you consume through your mouth. So in order for your body to have a wide range of bacteria, good and bad, right, to kill germs and fight infections, it needs to be fed the right foods to create that bacteria. So a healthy gut is considered to be one that has a myriad of different bacteria, right? Not all the same bacteria, various, various kinds. That's what a healthy gut is um, determined as. And they all work together to be able to fight infection and diseases. But the bacteria grows from certain foods, okay? And if the body isn't getting those foods, then that bacteria doesn't grow. So let's think about maybe if you or even your kids, because I know there's a lot of kids that don't eat. Um, I have one in my house. I have one next door 
who is so particular in what they eat that they always eat the same things over and over and over again. Um, it's actually time to add variety into your onto your dinner plate. Now, this isn't to say that you need to eat unhealthy foods to try and grow those types of bacteria to mix things up. That's not what we're saying. So you need to be sensible about what you're going to introduce, but slowly add new foods into the diet if you think um, that you might need to be doing that. And obviously that's going to be healthy foods. So different colored foods, different textured foods, um, differently prepared foods. So things like maybe some are fermented or some, you know, things like that. Um, we can talk a little bit more about fermented foods next week. Um, but you know, it is good to get a variety. So not always the same sort of meat and veg and not always, you know, in next door, my, you know, uh, eight year old's case, it's always fresh fruit, um, and waffles and toast and wee bix that, you know, that's her thing. So, um, we need to get, um, a different variety of things in there. Um, let me know in the comments if you think maybe this is something that could be you or could even be your kids, um, that you don't have, a, they don't have a huge variety of different foods in their diet. You kind of eat the same thing over and over again because it's convenient. Let me know in the comments if that's you. Um, I've just seen a message. I'm just going to pause for a second. I don't normally look at my messages while I'm doing this, but it's just popped up. Caitlin, if you're watching, Caitlin has just sent me a video. We've got some hoodies ready to be um, we've got looks like we've got some hoodies in, some inner fit for women hoodies. If this is something you are interested in, let me know, guys. But give me a hell yeah. Caitlin's just sent me a video. She's got her little hands um on an inner fit for women hoodie. I'm so excited. That's just popped up. Woohoo! Give me a, like a thumbs up or something, guys, if you're excited, because I know that you've been asking for those hoodies. So we do need to get those on order um, as well, but how exciting. I can't wait. Thanks, Katie, if you're watching. Thanks for sending that through. Everybody who's watching live tonight just got first exclusive that, yes, we're getting in a fit for women hoodies. Cannot wait. Hopefully they won't be too long so we can still wear them in winter. Hell yeah, says Melissa. <laughs> yeah. All right. Number two. I got distracted. Sorry, guys. Number two is drinking too much alcohol. Don't hate me yet. Please don't hate me yet. I know there are some of you that love alcohol. Um, but let me know, did you think this one was coming or not? Okay, did you preempt that maybe I was going to say this one? Um, so please don't hate me. And if you do now hate me even for mentioning it, I'm really sorry. But yes, excessive or regular consumption of alcohol can kill the good bacteria in your gut. Now, additionally, it can also promote the overproduction of certain types of bacteria, which will throw out your entire gut balance overall, okay? So alcohol can actually encourage the overgrowth of certain types of bacteria. But more than this, alcohol also has a negative impact on other parts of your digestive system. Which in then, okay, which then in turn affects how the bacteria and the microbiota of your gut, um, things like your um, liver and your kidneys function, okay? So alcohol has more of an impact on your gut health than just the bacteria, but it impacts on your liver and your kidney, and it's throw, when it throws off the bacteria, those sorts of things start to get, um, they're not working optimally as well. Alcohol can also stop the production of digestive enzymes. They are used to help in the process of digesting food and absorbing nutrients, okay? So if alcohol isn't directly altering the bacteria of your gut, which it does do, but if it's not doing that, then it is contributing because of the impact it has on your liver and your kidneys and how they respond to the production of gut bacteria that's going on. So alcohol is uh, not, not the best. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying be aware that alcohol, even a little bit consistently or um, over consumption on a regular basis, you know, binge drinking can have an effect. And we've talked about alcohol before. It is essentially a poison for your body. When you drink alcohol, your body stops all its other mechanisms in order to process and flush out alcohol, right? 
And this is a little extra tidbit, ladies, and it goes for smoking too. What If you're a smoker, whether that be um, tobacco, marijuana, whatever it is, um, smoking has a similar effect on your gut health as alcohol. It is a poison, ladies. All right, number three. The third thing that might be killing your um, gut health is antibiotics. Did you know this one? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Did you know this one? I'm sure most of you probably did actually, but it's not always the antibiotics that you think of either because not many people live on antibiotics for extended periods of time. Most of us only take antibiotics when we are sick. But um, there is one that is quite often overlooked as an antibiotic, right? Um, and I do know this one from personal experience, having um, that it does have an extremely negative impact on your gut health. And that one is acne medication. So your things like Roaccutane, okay? That stuff, while it might work wonders on clearing up the skin, is actually doing a significant amount of harm to the bacteria in your gut. Now, I'm not opposed to these products um, because sometimes having a clear face is going to do more for your self-confidence than having a healthy gut wheel, okay? I'm very much aware of that, especially teenagers. Um, I have a whole other opinion on teenagers on acne medication anyway, but that's my opinion. Um, but it is really important to know that these types of medications are doing internal harm in your gut and they do need to be balanced out with extra good nutrition. So if you are on um, something like an acne medication or any of the other sort of antibiotics that are around, um, just be aware that you may need to balance it out with a probiotic or you may need to balance it out with extra good nutrition. As a double whammy though, antibiotics kill good bacteria and encourage the growth of harmful bacteria. So when you are on antibiotics, it throws out the balance in your gut. Okay, so the longer you are on antibiotics, the worse that balance is going to get. But even one dose of antibiotics when we're sick can have a drastic effect on the overall balance. And sometimes it can take months to get your gut bacteria balance back to where it needs to be after taking one dose, which is like normally what a week's worth of like your normal antibiotics um, it can take months and months to um, get back into that right balance so just be aware sometimes you have to take the antibiotics okay you have to to get better um, but just be aware that that could be a contributor to your gut health I'm gonna have a quick drink have you got any questions at this point all right I'll come back to your questions if you pop them up. Number four, this one might surprise you. Surprise you. I'm not sure if you're going to see this one coming or not, but it's actually lack of exercise. Hands up if you predicted that one might be coming. In case you may not have made the connection, exercise definitely impacts on your gut health. So a study done in 2017 found... Um, it was done on the differences in the gut microbiota, so the gut bacteria, the profile between of women with an active lifestyle or a sedentary lifestyle. So it's done on women, right, and those who are, um, are physically active and those who are not. Um, and it showed that those who were physically active had a broader balance of bacteria in their gut, so a good balance. And we talked about that before, about having um, as many different bacteria in your gut as you can. That is what is considered a healthy gut. Um, so the physically active women had the broader range of bacteria in their guts compared to those women who were non-active. The active women had numerous amounts of bacteria, all different types, okay, which is what we want. Remember that we do want those high amounts of different bacteria so that they can all work together better to fight infections and diseases and to keep our digestive system healthy. So those non-active women, those sedentary women, only had a few of each type of bacteria in their gut and not such a broad range happening. This increases their chances of getting um, sick, I guess, um, and having gut health issues and having flow-on effects um, on the body from poor gut health. So if you are sedentary and you're not really active, there's just one more reason to go for a walk 
Guys, we're not talking about physically active doesn't necessarily have to be going to the gym and running 5Ks and doing HIIT classes. It's walking 20 to 30 minutes five times a week. It's not going to kill you. In fact, it's going to stop yourself. It's going to help you live longer and live better. Just walk, ladies. I am not encouraging anybody to jump into a gym membership or anything like that. I never do. Just walk. You will be so surprised at how underestimated a good walk every day really, really is for your overall health. But yes, a lack of exercise will contribute to poor gut health. All right, I've scrolled too far. Where are we up to? Number five. Here we go. The fifth one. And I wonder if you'll get this one too because um, this one is a little bit left of center and I bet it's not what you think it is. I bet I know what you're all thinking would be number five. What do you think number five should be go on tell me in the comments i know i know you're all waiting for me to say the very very obvious one um which i know you all we've been over it a million times already this month already so um yep that's it you guys know it you know it you know it all right but it's not that because i said that one last week and i said i was going to keep it as a bonus for this week so Number five is actually lack of sleep. Yep. Your sleep is so much more important for your overall health than you give it credit for. Now, if you are someone who is on our eight-week challenge, you know that next week sleep is actually your habit builder. And this tonight, ladies, is another reason why you need to make sleep a priority. Sleep directly impacts your gut health directly impacts although the research is still new on this one it does appear through studies that even a small amount of sleep deprivation so something like um four hours a night each night for two nights in a row let's say so um it actually causes the promotion of bacteria in the gut which is directly linked to and responsible for weight gain type 2 diabetes and your fat metabolism okay so sleep deprivation contributes to the growth of the bacteria that is directly linked to weight gain type 2 diabetes and slowing your um, fat metabolism the way your body metabolizes fat so getting enough sleep really does impact your weight ladies now something else to consider have you heard of the circadian rhythm it's like an internal 24-hour clock that our bodies have and it affects our brain, it affects our body and it affects our hormones. It tells you when to wake up and when to go to sleep. You know, we talk about this as our body clock, okay? It also appears that our gut has a similar clock. So when your body clock is out of whack, so too is the one in your gut, all right? And this will then cause chaos in the production of the bacteria as well as chaos in digestion of foods and other processes that your digestive system is responsible for. So sleep is really, really important and sticking to a routine of sleep as much as possible is going to ensure that you get a better night's sleep and keep your body clock working. You have a body clock in your gut. Sorry, ladies, it's just the way it works. So make sure you are getting enough sleep. All right. So that last one that you guys all know, I know you think I've forgotten about it, but I haven't. The one that really harms your health. Yes, uh, it is sugar. Okay, so I've given you five. I'm giving you the bonus one because we've talked about this multiple times, but it is sugar. Um, I said I would give you five things other than sugar last week, but let's have a quick look at what sugar does to your gut health. As we briefly mentioned last week, sugar is a food for yeast, okay? And it contribute, contributes significantly to yeast infections. Now, you ladies know what I'm talking about, okay? We quite often see this as thrush or thrush-related viruses, all right? Yeast in our bellies. So sugar works to increase the growth of poor bacteria in our guts. Um, it throws out the balance. Yeast is one of those bacteria and yeast is a dominant one. Yeast is extremely dominant um, in your gut health, okay? It takes over everything. So the less that we can feed yeast in our gut, 
the better our bodies will be overall. Now, this is primarily processed sugars when we're talking about the gut. But yes, the sugars in fruit contribute as well. Just not as much as the processed ones do in like, you know, cakes and biscuits and chocolate and um, actual sugar in our coffee and tea and breads and things like that. Okay, so yes, fruit contributes, but it's the lesser of the evils as well. So um, you always get the nutrients with fruit. So sugar is... I mean, we know sugar is not great for us. And it offers nothing for us nutritionally except the fact that it tastes bloody awesome. Am I right? Tell me if I'm right. Because if I'm wrong, I've been living my life really wrong. But sugar is probably the biggest contributor to poor gut health for many of the people in Western societies, okay? So if you're serious about looking after your gut health, a reduction in sugar and a reduction in processed sugar is a wonderful place to start, okay? As to is getting exercise and sleep, of course. Um, but just, you, I'm not saying go all out. I'm not saying cut everything out completely um, because that's often then when we crave it the most. But a reduction in processed sugars would be a really good start to improving your gut health. Probably your waistline as well too, ladies. All right, I have given you so much information to digest tonight. And you've all been really, really quiet on the comments, guys. Have I overwhelmed you? Have I um, not given you the information you thought I was going to give you? Tell me what the thought processes are, ladies, because you're very quiet tonight. The, the comments are only a few, a few and far between. I'm hoping that you have learned something tonight. And I really hope that you can take away even one thing to change for the better in your gut health, whatever that may be. And then if you can, then you'll be on the right track and this will have all been worthwhile joining me tonight, maybe. It wasn't worthwhile joining me tonight. Thanks, Mel. Mel says, great info. Mel, I wonder what it is that you learned tonight for your gut health. Next week, we are going to look at the things that you should be doing to encourage good gut bacteria balance. Okay, so we're going to dive right into that tomorrow night uh, not tomorrow night next sunday night we're going to dive right into that what is it that you can be doing to really improve your gut health and we will even be bringing you something that you can use to get your gut health on its way to being the best it can be so stay tuned ladies next week we're going to bring you something big so that you can really work hard on your gut health all right until then, ladies, have an amazing week. I think the rain's going to settle in. I'm not 100% sure. You can never believe the um, bomb app. But if it is, make sure you stay dry. Try and stay warm as much as you can. And make sure if you have watched this and you have learned something, let me know. Or if you have a further question, please let me know in the comments. All right, guys, have an amazing week. Talk to you soon. Bye.